this episode, I can't work under these conditions. Uh, are you, you going to be much longer? I just, I, I wouldn't mind a plop. Just clear off, bloody riffraff. So if I crouch and destroy my old man knees, my knees of cheese. Oh yeah, just come and do your business. I would if I could get the pages to stop flying open. Uh, let's just flip vertical. That's real toasters, eh? My nipples are hot. Uh, that's Tom's book, you know. Uh, nobody's gonna buy your book, Gavin. <laughs> no, not now, Clarence. I'm clearly busy. You just interrupted. I can't decide which one I like best, so I'll shoot both. Oh, look at the wind! <laughs> if I zoom out, they're, they're small. You know, it's that pyramid effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cougar. But if I flip this, that eliminates all of that. Now, I'm basically asphyxiated by uh, Pania Boona. Just look at the, the mountains over in the distance there. I don't know where to look, I'm spoiled. Like every direction, 180 degrees, is spectacular. Look, people expect a certain tone with my book. I don't want to disappoint them. I do like gods. I am very excited to announce that my landscape photography photo book is now available. Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle is a 120 page hardback book that features high quality prints of some of my very best landscape photography. Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Photo Tripper himself. No, not now, Clarence. I'm clearly busy. You just interrupted. Oh, let, let me guess, Vera. Plug in your new book again, are you, Gavin? Huh? Yeah, I'm trying to record a promo. But chasing all with Gavin Hardcastle. Yes. Uh, nobody's gonna buy your book, Gavin. <laughs> well, actually, I've almost sold nearly a thousand pre-orders, Clarence. So, you know, somebody wants it. Oh, really? Really? So what's so special about your book, Gavin? Hmm? Well, I'm glad you asked, Clarence, because every image is accompanied by the story of its creation. These stories range from inspiring to appalling. You wouldn't like it, Clarence. It, it's not for you. Oh, I certainly would not, Gavin. I much prefer landscape photography on location with Thomas Heaton. It's an excellent read, Vera. Well, um, Tom's book is its a really good book, actually. You should check that out. It is. There's a link in the description below. No, no. The link in the description is, is for my book, not Tom's, because this is, this is my promo video, not Tom's. I mean, Tom's is a good book, but by mine. Well, I, I don't see what's so special about your book, Gavin. Well, in addition to the glorious images and the stories, I also included tech notes, so I explain exactly how I put the image together. You could probably learn something from that, Clarence. I've seen your photography. No, no, that's no big deal. No one cares about that. And I even made sure that the text was in really big print, so even you'll be able to read it, Clarence. Oh, that's, that's quite good, actually. Yeah. I, I'm still not going to buy it, though. Well, actually, I've already pre-ordered a signed copy just for you. Really? <laughs> oh, uh, well, I just, you know, I... But if you don't want it... No, uh, uh, well, I... It's a, it's a very generous gift, Vera. I, I would be delighted to have Gavin's book. I tell you what, Clarence, seen as Vera pre-ordered, I'll sign this one just for you, eh? Oh, that's that's nice. It's very, very civilised of you, Gavin, actually. Yes. Yeah, you're going to love this. Right, there you go. <laughs> Good job, Clarence. Yeah. Right, there you go. Enjoy. No trouble at all. All right. All right, thanks, Vera. Uh, thanks, yeah. See you, Clarence. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, see you later. Here, let's have a look what he wrote. <laughs> To Clarence, you are a right twat. Oh, I can't stand Clarence. He's such a knob. No, oh, he's not so bad. He's terrible. I, I don't mind Vera though. She's all right. What do you mean? Well, I don't mean like that. I mean like you know, she's she's nice. She she bought my book. You know, oh. she supported me in that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, should we go on a landscape photography adventure? Yeah, let's yeah? do that. Let's go to an island. Yeah, which one? Let's do. Uh, Let's do Saturna. Ooh, never heard of that one. Yeah, Saturna Island. All right. During this current plague, the camper is the ideal way to travel locally for work while ensuring zero human contact. When your work life revolves around landscape photography, the best perk of the job is that your office can look like this. And the first spot that we've come to check out this morning is Winter Cove and I'm delighted to find this beautiful little arrangement. So I've got these cool rocks in the foreground, these really interesting trees, 
and then that island over there which is what's that one called this is what it's called and of course you've got this beautiful calm water here and i think we're looking north so the setting sun would go down over there which would give this some lovely light and then the rising sun pops up over there which would give all of this some lovely light so this works as a sunrise location and a sunset location so i'm quite excited that i found this spot i'll just be quiet for a second and see if you can hear these sea lions oh, that was ducks Apparently this area, pretty much most of Saturna, is a really good spot to come and see orcas. So I'm hoping, oh. ah, bald eagle over there, I'm hoping today we might get lucky and see some, some killer whales, some orcas. So maybe we'll come back for sunset, maybe sunrise, but it's nice to have this little location in my back pocket. After we've finished here we're going to go to a place called Murder Point. Mm -hmm. Sounds romantic. That coffee's kicking in, hey? I'm just jitters. One of the things that I love about March is the eagle activity. Hey, Gary, give us a bit of fish. Go on. Will you bugger off? Oh, go on. You're being too polite, Brian. What? Watch this. You've got to sneak up. Watch, watch. Uh, uh, just oh. clear oh, off, Jesus. bloody riffraff. All right, how about this then? Uh, sneak in from uh, the back. This is <laughs> oh, yeah. God, give me that fish. Oh, shit, I fell. <laughs> Ah, Kerry, you're such a drunk, you bloody idiot. <laughs> On the way back to the truck, we found this little gem. Are you coming? What? What's around the back? You'll have to come see. All right. Better be worth my knackered old knees. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Within minutes, we were back on the road. Yeah, so I really liked Winter Cove. That was gorgeous, but we've got 12 hours to kill before sunset. So let's head to Murder Point. And I'm sure it's only called that, like a, like a touristy name, you know, just to entice curious people like us, I guess. Yeah, I'm curious about murder. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's not actually like, dangerous or anything like that, you know. But there are goats. I do I do like goats. Me too. Do you think they're friendly? Uh well, I don't see why they wouldn't be. I mean we've got snacks, so they're gonna love us, aren't they, surely? Well yeah, they should. Yeah. We packed them just for them. I do like goats. So now we're hiking along Murder Point and we've already discovered why it's called that. And that's because in the first 60 seconds of us hiking on the trail, we both fell and uh, hurt ourselves is rather unpleasant that's uh, that's quite unusual it doesn't usually happen so we uh, we did see some goats way down on the beach but as soon as they clocked eyes on us they ran so i suspect that uh, maybe they well they don't like humans obviously but i wonder if the locals may, maybe hunt them for sport i, I don't know because most of the feral goats that i've ever bumped into they're usually quite interested in you because they think you've got some food. What's in your bag? And then we found this. Might be a goat's head, might, might be a deer skull, or maybe it's a sea creature. If you guys know what skull that belongs to, let us know. I'll give you a look. Do you think I have a hole in my head like this? Definitely. <laughs> Shh. So we, we hiked quite a bit further along this coastline haven't seen any more goats not live ones but uh, we did see lots of scats lots of animal waste that had bones in it and i i was pretty confident that saturna and most of these gulf islands don't have cougars on them um so i don't know what would be dropping chods that big full of bones but anyway it's times like these that i really feel like reading a page from chasing awe with gavin hardcastle mm, i don't think the time's right it's not right I don't think so. Maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a cougar? Only joking. You scared me. Don't talk like that. There. No. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. No, I'm only joking. So what we'll do is read a page no. from... Oh, okay, maybe later then. 
we'll just um, we'll just kill a few hours here on this beautiful cliff. Oh, there's a little little sea otter over there. there. Just that tiny little head there. I'm not even going to bother turning this around because it'll just be the tiniest dot. But we'll just kill a few hours here and hope to see some whales, and then go back to Winter Cove, and then maybe we'll read a page from Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle. What was that? Maybe later. I think later, yeah. You can't beat a campsite curry. So we've come back to Winter Cove to heat up a curry that I made the other day, which is, um, it's a paneer boona, which I made from scratch. Oh. It's quite delicious. It's spicers, eh? And uh, you're gonna have it with rice, and I'm gonna have it with, and I'm, sh I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of this, but this is all we could find on our travels. Flour tortillas. It's the closest thing I can get to a chapati on the road. Would have loved a, a nice chapati or a paratha. Ooh. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have a curry, I absolutely have to have a good, healthy sprinkling of coriander on the top, or as Canadians call it, Cilantro. Cilantro. I promise we will get to the photography, but you know, curry first. Oh, that's good. Because I'm on a diet, I'm only eating a kilo and a half of curry today. <laughs> uh, but usually I'd have you know, quite a lot more than that. After this, I'm going to fancy some chocolate and a coffee. Mm -hmm. I always like something sweet after something spicy. I don't know why. That was delicious. I'm stuffed. Yeah? I might want a shower though. Yeah, you gonna get in the shower? I think so. Oh, look at the camper. There it is. Oh, yeah. While you're in the shower, I'm gonna make a coffee. Do you want me to bring one into the shower for you? Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. Yeah. Right, I think I'll make a coffee. One of the luxuries of having a camper, or one of the best luxuries of all time, as I've mentioned before, is the ability to have a shower. Amanda's just in there now. Are you all right in there, love? <laughs> Yeah, I decided to take a bath instead. Are you going to be much longer? I just, I, I wouldn't mind a plop. Uh, not much longer. Oh. Because you've been in there like 30 minutes already. It's been a while. Well, I'm just reading your book. All right, well, shall, shall I bring your coffee in for you? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. All right, I'll bring your coffee in for you in a minute, yeah. All right, love, I've got your coffee. Do you want to open the door? There you go. Eh? Thank you. You having a good time in there? Oh yeah, eh? Yeah, you've been in there a while though. I won't mind getting in for a plop. I won't be much longer. All right, I'll come back. She likes to pamper herself, you know. <laughs> Love it, it's been like 45 minutes now. I really need that plop. Can I just, can I just come in? Oh yeah, just come and do your business. Yeah, all right, okay. Ooh. Oh, are you enjoying the book, love? Oh yeah, I really love page 66. It's a lovely story. Oh, it's a good one, that. Uh, that's Tom's book, you know. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's what you Anyway, love, we're gonna have to get moving real soon because I've got to do this sunset shoot and these guys have been waiting patiently for me to do some actual photography, you know? Okay, um, I just have to shave my legs, pluck my eyebrows, do my hair, put on my makeup and finish this wine. I just needed a plop. After what seemed like the longest bath since the time of Cleopatra, I finally got Amanda out of the camper and back on the trail. So it's about uh, four o'clock in the afternoon now. I'm actually suffering a bit of a curry coma. Mm. Are you? I'm still full. But we're back at the same spot that we're at this morning at Winter Cove. And the conditions look pretty good. Nice calm water. The only thing that I'm missing is clouds. I still think it'll be quite spectacular. So we'll see what we can get. Frame up that composition that I saw this morning and see what these new conditions reveal. Maybe it'll change the composition. Oh God, I'm so full of curry. Yeah, I'm basically asphyxiated by uh, Paneer Boona. It's quite brutal. So we've come to the point now back here where we were this morning and I'm really quite ecstatic because even though I was just griting about no cloudage back where I'm intending to shoot which is over in this direction once we cleared the tree line 
I can see that there's actually loads of clouds over there. I don't know which direction they're going, but there's a slim chance that something might creep into the scene and I might get that lovely glowing cloud cover that I wanted. We'll see. But I mean, even if I don't get it as it is, it's absolutely majestic. Have a look at this business. So as always, I'll just get busy handheld with the camera and refine that composition. When I came this morning, I didn't even bring my camera. I just kind of saw a composition with my eyes and just thought, yeah, I'll mentally log that. And I've got a rough idea of where I want to be, but I never actually played with the camera to actually see exactly where I needed to be. So I'll do that now. And then when I found the exact composition that I want, then I'll lock it down with the tripod and take the shot properly. Oh, fantastic. Just look, I don't, I don't know if this camera can pick it up, but just look at the, the mountains over in the distance there. So that's the mainland of Canada. And then as you keep going further south, it turns into Washington, USA. And you might just be able to see this gap through these trees. That giant mountain there is Mount Baker. Just fantastic. Oh, oh this just happens to be the perfect spot. <laughs> it is actually, that is the perfect spot. I'm shooting with 16 millimeter full frame. It's actually not wide enough. This kind of needs a really wide lens. It pretty much means a sun star shot as the sun's going down, which I seem to have been shooting loads of those recently. Uh, but just the way that the light's hitting all of these surfaces right now is just absolutely fantastic. Honestly, I'm not deliberately being lazy. It's just, that's, that's the best spot. Vertical kind of works quite well. And then let's get a little bit further over here because I like these trees. So you see these? but they're kind of backlit. So I don't know if they're, they're just probably a dark mush. I don't know if they're showing up or if there's any detail, but they are really nice. So it would be nice to feature those, but I don't know if that's gonna work. But I, I, I don't know where to look. I'm spoiled, like every direction, 180 degrees is spectacular. So I kind of like that shot of Mount Baker through these two trees. I'm, I'm seeing like a, a panorama. Let me just do a quick test shot of that. But I think that'll get better as the sun has gone down because I just happen to know through experience that Baker starts to catch that, that beautiful glow. Once the sun has gone down, you can see that hot glow kind of rise up through the peak of Baker. So that's probably what I'll shoot after I've rinsed the out of this spot. Oh, so much to work with. Right, so I kind of like this rock here. So if I crouch and destroy my old man knees, my knees of cheese, it's kind of cool, but it loses that pointiness. So if I get back up, it's a bit more pointy, but I'm kind of in that uncomfortable in between crouch. And then if I move forward, you'll see the shape changes again. And then I move down again. So that's what I often do when I'm playing with foreground is I, I crouch, go higher, go lower, move forwards, move back. It's a process. Oh, did you hear that? I think my knees just exploded. That's how old and knackered I am. So now that I moved down here, it's accentuated this rock. You can see as I move closer to it, the shape of that stretches and this trail kind of elongates. But I don't like all this complicated shrubbery on the left. It looks kind of messy, but if I flip this, that eliminates all of that. And I'd want to move to the left a little bit. So if I get a bit higher, it eliminates all that mess and it brings in a little bit more light here. So it's these constant adjustments. What I do when I'm composing a shot, it's you pretty much compose with your zoom and then your feet and your knees, you know? It's that up and down, forwards and back, side to side, in and out with the zoom. But what I'll do here is I'll just punch in to about there. So this loses all of that foreground. If I just zoom out ever so slightly, there we go, focus that. So what this composition does, maybe even a little bit more, it's still giving me kind of like a three layer system. So I've got this rock in the immediate foreground, then this lovely little ridge here, and then the end of this island. But by zooming in, all of these distant subjects look way bigger. If I zoom out, they're, they're small, you know, it's that pyramid effect. So it, it really is a case of deciding what is most important and then making your, your focal length choice based on what you think is most important. Well, look at these clouds though, we've got some clouds now. All that complaining and moaning I did. 
So what I'm doing now, I've moved much closer to these, these rocks in the foreground, eliminating that ridge and all of those trees, and it simplifies things. So I'm still getting that lovely distortion as, because I'm very close to these subjects. Just brighten that up a little bit. And it's made this island look a lot bigger. But I'm gonna have to make a decision. I'm, I'm running out of time. And so now I've moved on to the other side of that very same rock. Before I was in the shade side, now I'm on the lit side. So it's got a lot more color and a lot more light, but it's not as interesting. It's kind of boring. Uh, let's just flip vertical. That doesn't work because there's nothing in this space. It's just a shadow. Let's go back to horizontal. So that doesn't work. I've eliminated that. So I think it's between where I started off and where I was just now. Oh, it's cold. It's freezers, eh? Yeah, I'm gonna go back up because I like this trail coming down. I feel like higher up, there's more to look at. There's more that leads you in to this, this island there. So let's try that. Let's get back up there and it's warmer. <laughs> oh, it's bloody cold. I, I am bloody freezing. I don't know about you. Uh, we, we brought these uh, electric heated vests. I'm going to show you those in a minute, but I can't take the time to put it on right now because the light is changing rapidly. So I think I've boiled it down to two compositions. So I've got this one here. So it's very central. So you see, you've got this, it's almost like a triangular series of rocks and ridges right here in the center pointing at that island there. So it's either that composition or I push those off to the right and I add in this rock and these trees here. And then I'll have to deal with the sun star, you know, as that goes down, I'll just stop down and darken things up and you'll see how that goes. But it's, uh, it's a tricky one. I can't decide which one I like best. So I'll shoot both. This is pretty much the perfect scenario where there's no clouds on the horizon. The sun is free and clear but there's clouds up above it. That is the perfect scenario. So I'm very excited and very cold. Oh God, right, let's get, let's get sorted. I'm gonna put my jacket on. Right, so let me try and explain what's going on with this composition. So you can see this lovely sort of pyramid shape in the foreground, as well as the sort of secondary pyramid, which is just the end of this piece of land, and then the island in the background there. And the reason why I've composed it like this is because if I if I composed it let's say like this without the sun being part of the the shot it just won't work because the sun is right on the edge of the frame I mean I could zoom past it but then I lose all this lovely foreground so the reason why I've decided to keep the sun in the frame and basically put it on this left vertical is because the sun is balanced with the edge of this island here and then I've still got all of this amazing foreground. And I'll just take the shot now while I'm talking to you. Now, once the sun's gone down and that bright, hot sun is no longer part of the frame and the clouds become, you know, what is most important in the shot, then that will change my composition. It'll, it'll define what I do next. And usually that's my favorite kind of light anyway. I just love that post sunset glow when the clouds light up. So I'm quite excited for that. So I'll just take a few more of these frames and then we'll put that all together. And if it looks any good, here's the shot. is absolutely freezing. You know, it's times like this when I want to just warm up and read a page from Chasing Awe with Gavin Hardcastle. I would if I could get the pages to stop flying open. Uh, it's, it's a little bit too windy for this. Maybe, okay, maybe later. So we got these uh, amazing heated electric vests from a company called 
Ewell, and there's, we've got his and hers. So, of course, Amanda pretty much just wears it 24-7. It's toasty. I could probably just get away with wearing this. Yeah? These. I'll try. Yeah, all right. But I'm feeling the need to, to wear mine now because it is absolutely gibbering. So, how, how does that feel? Is that toaster, is he? Wow! I thought they'd look pretty bad, but they look all right. You, you wear it well, love. But basically, the way it works is you, you put it on, and if it's just turn you around there, so there's this battery pack here in the back, which is what obviously heats the elements that run through the vest. I, I found that it was the back yeah, that's warm. that was where most of the heat was. Then you get the heat in the front, and you just, once it's all plugged in and wired up, you just hold this down. No. No, I'm not gonna switch it off. <laughs> you hold this button down for three seconds, and then it powers on, and instantly you start to feel this heat coming through the jacket and I am I'm feeling the need for it right now. You should put it on. You won't regret it. I think it says you get about four hours. Really? Of, on hot. Oh yeah, four hours on hot. But you can turn it down. Let's show you this. No. <laughs> <laughs> like you can turn down the. You can hold this and switch it to different settings to make it not quite as hot. But it, when you first switch it on, it goes into this like maximum heat mode, That's which is pretty much what you want. Well, you want that all of the time for this kind of thing. Where there's really no hike involved you're just kind of standing around in the cold freezing this is an absolute godsend it's well i'm gonna i'm gonna put mine on now instead of waffling on right can you take care of that yeah man it's 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 so cold it's making me almost question my appropriate footwear is my belly hanging out the bottom it is isn't it right so you hold this down three seconds one deux trois there you go and it's got the the lovely glow so now i'll put this on because <laughs> bloody freezing i tell you what look at the wind they sent us these just in time oh. christ do I, do I look stylish yeah looks good. yeah oh that's toasters i can feel it already yeah that is i am 10 percent less miserable already do you know what they need to do is they need like heated gloves do they do heated gloves yeah. maybe they'll send us a pair of those <laughs> yeah if you're watching this just send us the full mashings i want a heated hat heated gloves heated flip-flops well i guess i don't need these now do i oh i'm i'm quite comfortable right now the only thing that's cold is my my hands so i've got some gloves for that put my glove edges on oh that's toasty now <laughs> my nipples are hot oh this toaster is he Oh, that's real toasters, eh? Yeah, real toasters. Um, so my only other gripe with this thing, again, it's all about this battery compartment. What I would like to see on a future model with that, that brick, it's kind of like the kind of battery brick that you would use to power devices, right? There's no USB outputs on it. So the only purpose of the brick is to power the vest. I'd like to see a couple of USB slots on it so that I could power the Osmo on my phone or any other device in a pinch because I'm dragging this thing around anyway. So it'd be nice to be able to use it for multiple things. Uh, Do you know what would make this moment perfect? If I read a page from Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle. Let me just give you a little little taster from that. Oh, this is this is one of my favourites. Standing atop a 100 metre cliff face like some hero of legend, I was suddenly struck by the desperate need to evacuate my bowels. It doesn't say that. It says that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, people expect a certain tone with my book. I don't want to disappoint them. This is really hard with gloves on. I can't feel the pages. Oh, such nice pages though. Oh, this one, chocolate swirl, this is a good one. Talking about a workshop that I shot in Scotland once. Things went reasonably well until after a short stroll, we reached the ancient stone staircase that takes you down into the canyon. Some of the older ladies in my group looked incredulous and asked, you want us to go down there? Of course, I exclaimed, equally incredulous. It's funny, my, my body's hot. I'm almost sweating, but I can't feel my fingers. Can't turn this page. I'm gonna have to use what these gloves were designed for. <laughs> Actually take my finger out. Get your finger out. This, oh, this one's a sad one, this one. This is quite, it's quite intimate. It's very personal, this one. Look at that little fairy tree. 
cold, almost submerged, barely hanging on. That's me. I never truly acknowledged it at the time, perhaps because I'm English, or perhaps because denial seemed the safest way to handle such a dark chapter of my life. But make no mistake, I was utterly and hopelessly depressed. There's a link in the description below. Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle is a limited edition print, and with almost half of the copies already pre-ordered, you'll need to get your copy while you still can. And lucky for you, they're on sale for just a few more days. Well, that is it for the sunset, and it was quite a nice sunset. It was pretty. But we've still got one little hidden gem to show you, so let's head back into that enchanted forest, see if we can get a shot of that magic tree. But in the darkness of the enchanted forest, we almost missed this secret doorway into another dimension. One of the reasons why I love night photography is because with a little bit of creativity, you can create your own magical scene using some basic lighting tools. So here are three raw files that make up this final image. And using a large orange light, I backlit the tree, bracketed for shadows and highlights, and also experimented with white balance settings. Now the final image has some selective color and contrast enhancements, and I went for a crop that pushed the door off to one side of the frame. Not bad for a nighttime fumble in the forest. I worked really hard to put this video together, so if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, maybe post a comment. Thanks for watching, bye bye.